March the 11th marked the day that Samsung released the Samsung Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge, but this video is going to focus on the S7. The phone is packed with some great all-round tech specs. It includes a 64-bit octa-core processor, 4GB of RAM and 32GB of internal memory. It is also IP68 certified. It is dustproof and water resistant over 1.5 meters and 30 minutes. Let's take a look at it. The design has remained the same as its predecessor, the Samsung Galaxy S6. The premium glass and metal finish have been reused, but there is a very subtle difference, which may be minor but makes the phone look a lot better. If you look closely, you'll notice the home key no longer has a metal rim around it, so it blends in with the rest of the phone quite nicely and gives the phone a much cleaner look. The size of the smartphone has also remained the same, however the S7 is slightly thicker at 7.9mm, the S6 has a thickness of 6.8mm, so it's a mere 1.1mm difference and barely noticeable when the phone is in your hand, which feels nice and comfortable by the way. It has a good grip and can easily be used one handed. It does attract a lot of fingerprints though, which is a bit of a downside, but it's not a massive problem. It feels super smooth typing on it, so I guess I'll let the fingerprint issue slide. The S7 has a Quad HD Super AMOLED 5.1 inch display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels at 577 pixels per inch and outputs great colour. Everything looks so clear and crisp whether it's a video, a photo, a game or an app and that's because Samsung have made the screen around 25% brighter and enhanced the contrast ratio. An additional feature Samsung introduced to the screen is the always on display which is what it says, a screen that is always on. When the phone is idle, it displays the date, time, battery level and a count of notifications if you have any. You can of course choose to show a one month calendar in addition to the defaults or even choose to display an image. I chose to turn this feature off though because I don't think it's worth the battery usage. Samsung claim it only uses 1% an hour, but that's 24% in an entire day. Is it worth losing a quarter of your battery? Speaking of the battery, the S7 comes with a much bigger battery, 3000 mAh compared to 2550 mAh on the Galaxy S6 and charging times have been given a boost. The S7 also offers fast cable charging, a new feature that when enabled charges the phone at a quicker rate. It can charge a full battery in 90 minutes. The phone also supports wireless charging but as expected a wireless charging pad is required. Whilst all of this is great, it may come as a disappointment to many that the battery is non-removable, but it's really not a problem. I mean, there are power banks you can purchase, like this one, for when you're out and about. You never know when it might come in handy. And it's pretty powerful too, with a 10,000 mAh capacity, offering up to 5 full charges. It also has a dual USB output and is perfect for emergencies. The top of the phone holds a SIM tray for a nano SIM, but that's not all. It's also combined with a highly demanded SD card holder, which most Android users had hoped for. Samsung removed the support for additional storage in the S6, so this sure has and will put a smile on a lot of faces. It supports up to 200GB too, which is fab. The Galaxy S7 has a 12 megapixel rear camera, but the dual pixel sensor technology behind it gives it that edge, and the picture quality is just amazing. The focus on the camera is as quick as a human eye, so you'll never experience any blur like you do with some smartphones. You also get wider angle photos with the S7 camera, which allows you to fit in more in a single picture. The selfie mode, which uses a 5 megapixel camera, is also quite wide, but Samsung have also added an additional wide selfie mode, which is perfect for those group selfies, but that's not all. There are many more modes to choose from as you can see here. So with the S7, you're not just getting a basic camera. Samsung have helped reduce the number of additional apps you need. Want to put multiple videos into a single video? Why not use the video collage? Want to capture a panoramic shot? Why not use motion panorama and capture the perfect still? What makes it even better is that the S7 records 4K video. This is not set by default, so you do need to change it in the settings, bearing in mind that 4K videos do use up more storage space. But it is totally worth it for the quality alone. It's most definitely the smartphone with the strongest recording ability and offers the most satisfying results. You will not be disappointed. The Galaxy S7 comes pre-installed with Android 6.0 Marshmallow. The user interface has improved greatly and app icons have been redesigned, looking identical to those found in Apple's iOS. 
It runs quite smoothly with multiple apps running simultaneously with no slowdowns or lags experienced, which is to be expected from a smartphone with 4GB of RAM. Having used the Samsung Galaxy S7 for well over a month, I am truly impressed and would recommend this to anyone looking for a smartphone upgrade. The S7 is available in Onyx Black or Gold with 32GB of internal storage. If you're interested in purchasing it, then you can do so by visiting the GIFGAF website. You can find the link below the video. I hope this review has helped. Thanks for watching.